we will talk about the scientific training concepts now. What are the different types of scientific concepts are there, which is now we uh, training companies are following, organizations are following. First, they are doing the job analysis. They are training the operators to do the job analysis, to understand about the job, to analyze about the job, do the method analysis, to understand about the different methods, how to do the, that particular job. Systematic skill, stamina and knowledge development about the skill, the development of the skill, skill development like the, the persons are there to how to brush up their skills, the do the stamina, stamina is more about that uh, the person is having the skill, but they are not able to perform for a quite, uh, for a longer period of time. The stamina run is, is, is can be done with the help of the stamina run to do the, this particular job for first start with the 15 minutes, then 30 minutes, maybe 1 hour, then 2 hours, maybe 4 hours and then 8 hours of the stamina run and maybe it will be done for weekly also to understand that one. The first the target will be for the smaller period, maybe for uh, uh, for uh, one cycle of the, one, for one cycle of the, of the operation, then it increase for uh, maybe multiple cycles in the type of 15 minutes then 30 minutes. So, we, we are going and we are checking the operator's performance based on that particular time duration, that is a stamina run. And then for the knowledge development about that, the theory is also included with that to understand about the operator to operator to understand the, 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 the entry level operator to understand about the different type of knowledge engaged in this particular training. Then establish goal and target, to establish the target for each and every operation, uh, type of the training tool, whatever the training, whether it is the different type of the paper exercise has been being followed in the training, then we have the fabric exercise are getting followed in the training, skill exercises are there in the training, paper exercises are more like the people will be doing on the exercise on the paper. So, paper in the straight line, in the curve, in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the circle, the person will be doing the, they will be handling, they know how to handle the, uh, the piece of the paper. Then the similar similar things or maybe something different can be done on the fabric also. So many company, so many uh, training providers, they are doing directly on the fabric size without doing on the paper exercise, giving the training on the paper exercise. Then we are having the skill exercise, skill exercise in actual, actual type of the garment like the you know, uh, maybe uh, the people are getting the similar type of the garment and that particular garment he is making the complete garment, like the mock mock garment he is preparing on that during the skill exercises. Then for each and everything, the goal and target used to be fixed for, for those particular jobs. Then define the quality specification, the specification for the quality for each and every product, the quality is, has, uh, is normally defined, what are the SPI for required for this particular uh, stitch, for this particular operation what is the uh, seam length, what is the, uh, what is the uh, allowances, seam allowances are required, what machine calibration is required, these all things has to be given as a part of the quality specification, the training is given as a part of the quality specification. We have the selection and placement procedure is also there, that is a recruitment, recruitment and then placement process, uh, procedure is there, then induction and orientation program is there, the once the uh, operators are on board, the induction and orientation programs has to be done about the orientation about the company, about the job, about the type of the product, about the profile, everything will be given in to those operators. Then participation, the participation used to be there that the person used to participate in different, uh, the activity used to be provided like the soft skill or so many other activities are there. During that activity, the students, uh, the, the operators is given chance to, to participate in those activity. And then we are having, also having the uh, option for the train staff for training, like the person I already have discussed about the, the retraining or cross training. These parts will be done for the train staff who has already done for the training and measurement and control of the progress. Each and every uh, time, whatever, uh, you know, du duration is there, a weekly assessment is there or maybe uh, uh, twice in a, uh, is a, in a week, the assessment used to be there. So, the assessment has to be done, the measurement for the control of the progress process has to be done. The purpose of the training is to provide the train operators to attend high speed of production together with a good quality work. That is main aim of the, 
of the training to provide the operators to understand that you know the 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 how to attain the speed how to do the production speed and production should be together for a quality product good quality product good quality comes from the consistency use of correct methods and it is good instruction on methods which are the secret of good quality works the steps which should be taken to achieve good quality are as follows that is initial instruction a training practice quality checking method checking the in instruction normally initially we used to give the instruction to the to the person about the about the the uh, the, the the quality of the work what are the what are the work has given and what are the instruction uh, against that particular work we first equip the person operator with the instruction about the do's and don'ts always uh, we, we can say that always uh, always uh, we can say that uh, prevention is better than cure then the practice of the training training practice has to be given the uh, the trainee has to do the practice on that particular job to understand about the what are the quality parameters are there then doing the quality checking to check the quality of that particular product and do the methods checking to do the to make, make the correct method as it was rightly said by dr juran that 80% of the problems are management oriented and only 20% of workers oriented a company needs to create this in a competitive advantage by making people before making products to reap the fruit of success because the problem happens like that the we have issues which comes directly from the management we always blame that this is the problem which is done by the operator but what type the facility we have given to the operator what type the vocational training or professional training we have given to the operator whether we have taken care during the recruitment process of these things these factors even after taking the after doing the recruitment whether we have they have we have sent them these operators for any type of formal training so these all are the issues which a management has to take care how to train the manpower how to educate them about the their the product their services their facilities what product who has to do which product has to be deal so these all things has to be done by has to be taken care by the management even dr darlie khosi have also told that only 3% even less than the 3% of 12.8 million of the populations joining the workforce every year have the opportunity for any kind of vocational or skill training that is a very only 3% less than the 3% we think the situation where only less than the 3% of the people are there in this this workforce who has gone through any professional or vocational training around 97% of the major chunk of the people are still joining in this field without getting any formal training whatever they are knowing from beginning whatever somebody had taught informally whatever the inherently they have grabs it from the family they are continue with the same and now we are talking about the productivity we are talking about the efficiency we are talking about the uh, performance we are talking about the capacity we are talking about the these gap that gap training gap capacity gap this very uh, difficult to get those these things without addressing the problem the major problem is that how we are doing the training once we talk about the quality once we talk about the quantity first we have to equip the manpower we have to equip the facility with those uh, in those areas so that the people Uh, like all three man machine material all three areas has to be well well versed has to be uh, made in such a way that we will reach these targets the emphasis of the government on skill development 
with a target of 500 million skilled manpower by 2020 can go a long way in supporting the growing needs of the garment industry. The CII has projected that textile sector alone requires 86.5 million more people by year 2022. So, there is huge chunk of requirement of skilled manpower in especially in textile industry and garment industry. So, these manpower is required on the different levels. It requires the first line managers levels like the supervisors, team leaders, floor in charge. We require the middle management level like the production manager, quality manager, all the managers, assistant manager of production and require some senior management level also like the general manager of the company, it is required the vice president of the company. So, each, each level we required the people and the training has to be given for each and every level. It is start with the operator level, then it will go for the middle man, uh, first line manager level, it has to go for the middle management level, it has to go to the vice president level. The training program has to be developed accordingly. Here we are going to discuss about the operator training which is the major chunk of the, the complete business who are the basically the uh, we can say that the, the first point where who are making the product, who are uh, if we talk about the garment manufacturing who is making the garment. So, the training of those manpower is required and different types of training methods are being followed by different companies different institutes, different training providers. The operator training can be broadly divided into three parts that is the basic training, then retraining, then cross training. The moment we talk about the basic training, basic training duration used to be around maybe uh, 2 weeks to 6 weeks by most of the training providers which talks about the, the training in the basic areas of garment manufacturing. Then we talk about the retraining, retraining is basically the if the operator has already knowing the garment how to make the garment, maybe he will be he is trained in one or two operations and he is not performing as per the what the performance level he is expecting, we uh, company is expecting from him or uh, for from her. In that case, the operator will be sent for retraining to increase the uh, capacity, to increase the performance level. The cross training is basically the op to make the operators well versed in the different training, uh, different uh, opera operations also apart from the operation he is knowing or she is knowing. That is the cross training. In the cross training, operators are getting, uh, we are making the we will talk about the scientific training concepts now. What are the different types of scientific concepts are there which is now we uh, training companies are following, organizations are following. First they are doing the job analysis, they are training the operators to do the job analysis, to understand about the job, to analyze about the job, do the method analysis to understand about the different methods, how to do the, that particular job. Systematic skill, stamina and knowledge development about the the skill, the development of the skill, skill development like the, the persons are there to how to brush up their skills, the do the stamina, stamina is more about that uh, the person is having the skill but they are not able to perform for a quite, uh, for a longer period of time. The stamina run is, is, is can be done with the help of the stamina run to do the, this particular job for first start with the 15 minutes, then 30 minutes, maybe 1 hour, then 2 hours, maybe 4 hours and then 8 hours of the stamina run and maybe it will be done for weekly also to understand that one. The first the target will be for the smaller period maybe for uh, uh, for uh, one cycle of the one, for one cycle of the of the operation then it increase for uh, maybe multiple cycles in the type of 15 minutes then 30 minutes. So, we we are going and we are checking the operator's performance based on that particular time duration that is a stamina run and then the, for the knowledge development about that the theory is also included with that to understand about the operator to operator to understand the the the, the entry level operator to understand about the different type of knowledge engaged in this particular 
training then establish goal and target to establish the target for each and every operation uh, type of the training tool whatever the training whether it's the different type of the paper exercise has been being followed in the training then we have the fabric exercise are getting followed in the training skill exercises are there in the training paper exercises are more like the people will be doing on the exercise on the paper so paper in the straight line in the curve in the in the uh, in the uh, in the circle the person will be doing the they will be handling they know how to handle the uh, the piece of the paper then the similar similar things or maybe something different can be done on the fabric also so many company so many uh, training providers they are doing directly on the fabric size without doing on the paper exercise giving the training on the paper exercise then we are having the skill exercise skill exercise in actual actual type of the garment like the you know uh, maybe uh, the people are getting the similar type of the garment on that particular garment he is making the complete garment like the mock mock garment he is preparing on that during the skill exercises then for each and everything the goal and target used to be fixed for for those particular jobs then define the quality specification the specification for the quality for each and every product the quality is has uh, is normally defined what are the spi for required for this particular uh, stitch for this particular operation what is the uh, seam length what is the uh, what is the uh, allowances seam allowances are required what machine calibration is required these all things has to be given as a part of the quality specification the training is given as a part of the quality specification we have the selection and placement procedure is also there that's a recruitment recruitment and then placement process uh, procedure is there then induction and orientation program is there the once the uh, operators are on board the induction and orientation programs has to be done about the orientation about the company about the job about the type of the product about the profile everything will be given in to those operators then participation the participation used to be there that the person used to participate in different uh, the activity used to be provided like the soft skill or so many other activities are there during that activity the students uh, the the operators has is given chance to to participate in those activity and then we are having also having the uh, option for the trained staff for training like the person i already have discussed about the the retraining or cross training these parts will be done for the trained staff who has already done for the training and measurement and control of the progress each and every uh, time whatever uh, you know du duration is there a weekly assessment is there or maybe uh, uh, twice in a is a in a week the assessment used to be there so the assessment has to be done the measurement for the control of the progress process has to be done the purpose of the training is to provide the trained operators to attain high speed of production together with a good quality work that is main aim of the of the training to provide the operators to understand that you know the 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 how to attain the speed how to do the production speed and production should be together for a quality product good quality product good quality comes from the consistency use of correct methods and it is good instruction on methods which are the secret of good quality works the steps which should be taken to achieve good quality are as follows that is initial instruction a training practice quality checking method checking the in instruction normally initially we used to give the instruction to the to the person about the about the the uh, the, the the quality of the work what are the what are the work has given and what are the instruction uh, against that particular work we first equip the person operator with the instruction about the do's and don'ts always uh, we, we can say that always uh, always uh, we can say that uh, prevention is better than cure then the practice of the training training practice has to be given the uh, the trainee has to do the practice on that particular job to understand about the what are the quality parameters are there then doing the quality checking to check the quality of that particular product and do the method check to to the to make, make the correct method topic is training and its importance so our uh, training and importance the moment we talk about the training and the the in, its importance 
in terms of garment industry what are the areas are there where training and is, is how it is important the training is a continuous process where optimum use of 3ms like the man machine and material should be the aim of training program for an apparel industry training and learning skills helps to compete in the global market and increasing productivity of employees that will help further to achieve its long term goal trained staffs responds well to new responsibility and they approach to job with enthusiasm as they have to apply skills and knowledge they have acquired the purpose of the training is to uh, train operators to train high speed and production together with good quality work good quality comes from the consistent use of correct methods and it is in good instructions on methods which is the secret of good quality work the training can be done at different levels the training in especially in apparel industry if you talk about a training so training can be done at the operator level it can be done on first line managers level like the supervisors team team uh, leaders floor in charge it can be done at middle management level middle management is maybe different managers are there like the quality managers production managers and it can be done on senior manager level like the vp and gm levels so uh, here we are talking about the training for which has to be which can be provided to operators how what type of training we are going to provide for the operators and what are the different type of training parameters are there which has been already coined by different training providers so we will start we will we will talk about the training operator training first in the uh, operator training the training can be broadly divided into three parts one is the basic training second is a retraining and third is cross training the basic training the main aim of the basic training to train the operators on the basic operations to understand how to do the machine control then uh, do the paper exercises then do the fabric exercises then do the skill exercises so that the operator will have the hands on experience on doing the work you handling the sewing machines understanding about the different parts of the garment different type of the straight line here he will do the straight line he will do the curve he will do the circles so during this way the hand dexterity the finger dexterity the uh, hand eye coordination these all things will be will be done it will be tested during the uh, although it will be tested during the recruitment and selection process but it will be it will go hand by hand during the training process also the different training programs has been coined by different training providers following are some training systems which is being followed from year 1940 till now in the sewing machine operators training worldwide the uh, the first and foremost training system has been which has been already captured and registered as known as TWY which has been given by TWY the name is training system is twy it stands for training within industry so it has been originated it is supposed to be originated in united states department of war which has been running from 1940 to 1945 during the world war the training time still is not defined properly what is the exact duration of the training but the 10 hours of the sessions was given by the certified ty trainers the focus on the training of the trainers that is the four principles has been used for this that is job instructions that is known as jie the job methods that is known as jm the job relations that is jr and program development that is a pd this is oldest and most implement implemented method of the training and the skill breakdown the preparation the presentation and the application and testing these all parameters has been taken into consideration during the training of of sewing machine operators after twy twy the which is the most widely and uh, nowadays still the, we are using this particular method of the training which is most common among the manufacturer especially the garment manufacturer in india and worldwide is known as the name of the system is known as double amt double amt stands for advanced analytical methods of training which was coined by ksa in year 1967 and nowadays technopack 
under the Technopack, the this particular double AMT systems is being implemented among different company and different uh, uh, you know training centers. The time, the duration of this particular training program is known as four to six weeks. This will have the classroom theoretical training, that is stamina build up exercises is there, uh, basic training is there, safety training is there. The PC paper exercises are there, fabric exercises are there, and on-job follow-ups are there. So on-job follow-ups is basically we will we will elaborate this particular training program in detail and later on. First, we will complete the different type of the training programs what being provided and what is known, what is being nowadays is uh, presence is there in the industry. The third one after the double AMT, the third one is Jukis, uh, like the Juki man, the major machine manufacturer, sewing machine manufacturers. The name of the training program is Juki Sewing Factory Operators Training Handbook. It has been uh, coined, it has been edited in 1972 and it was compiled by Manuel Gotten by Juki, Tupon Juki. The training time as mentioned in this particular uh, Juki exercise is of 2 to 3 months. The paper, this is, uh, this the com, uh, consists of paper practices, high time of off, the job training, the fixed time of each exercises, no target in uh, beginning and all operation requires skill taught slow transition from paper to fabric to production line. So this is the main aim of this particular Juki's uh, training program where there is no as such fixed time has not been allocated for each and every exercises. But for each and every exercises, uh, they have given the, the slow transition has been ma uh, mentioned is from the paper to fabric to production line. The, the different exercises has given and the hands on will be done on production line. Then uh, the one published book is known as uh, the how to train sewing machine operators in, uh, in Nepal industry that, uh, that has been, uh, that has been uh, authored by Alessandro. The training time for uh, this particular uh, has not been clearly mentioned, it's, although mentioned it is not very clear about that particular thing. The sewing exercises using paper seats has been used for this particular training program. So, uh, and after this, we have the different uh, institutes are there, the, the training institutes are there. Among that, we can also mention the name as NIFT, that's National Institute of Fashion Technology. In 1970, uh, 87, the training uh, exercises has been mentioned in the, their, uh, the course curriculum in the garment construction. They have mentioned the training exercises for each and every different training exercises as mentioned. And total training time is 96 hours which is the introduction of the sewing equipment, paper and fabric sizes, parts and garments making. So uh, it's, it's, it has been combination of the paper, fabric and uh, skill exercises all together. Then further to this, we are having the, the sewing uh, exercises or training exercises has been, uh, has been mentioned by ILFS, it has been coined in ILFS in 2014. The name of this training program is, is known as SEAM, S-E-A-M. SEAM stands for Skill for Employment in Apparel Manufacturing. This program has been, as, as I mentioned that, this program was developed by ILFS in 1947 uh, and uh, it has been originated in 2007 itself under the Ministry of Rural Development. The training program is one month plus follow up. And the multimedia, they have taken the key on as a multimedia uh, best learning where standardized content of all reduced re uh, requirement of trainers. It has been given that the learning, the standardization content for all and the reduce the requirement of the trainers has been is the main focus of this particular training program. Apart from this, uh, the next uh, training uh, uh, program, what has been our next training uh, name of the training program is Sewing Operators Training that has been mentioned in IFPIC Paris. This is also as an institute which has uh, this is the uh, for, for this uh, particular uh, sewing machine operators training. They have a different type of uh, training programs. They have coined the different type of the training programs and they have the different exercises also which has been used in the different companies. This is the basically IFPIC is definitely the French Competitiveness and Business Cluster Association. It's there in Paris. The time for the exercise is not mentioned as such, 
but it's it's uh, doing the sewing machine training on the paper as well as on fabric. After this, uh, the na next uh, training programs, what is there in existence known as systematic training program by uh, renowned UK best garment consultant Paul Collier. The training time has been mentioned as 2.2 and half weeks to 3 weeks and one month of the follow up after that after the training uh, of 2, two and half to 3 weeks one month of the follow up is mentioned there. This has been uh, mentioned uh, the training uh, the highlight of this particular training is mock pieces skill breakdown then speed before uh, train quality train the trainers attention to methods and perfect practice. These are the highlights of this particular training program coined by the renowned consultant Paul Collier. Then after uh, the book has we have the published uh, book also which is known as Industrial Engineering in Apparel Production which was be published by uh, Mr. V. Ramesh Babu in 2012. In this particular book the, the they have elaborated they have mentioned about the different type of trainings. The training time is 4 to 6 weeks. The classroom is theoretical training and the stamina build up exercises are there. They are doing the they have mentioned about the safety importance of the they have mentioned the importance of the safety training. Then paper exercises are there and fabric exercises are there. So these are the highlight of the book published by Ramesh Babu in year 2012. Then one uh, Patrick Pauls he is a South African productivity expert in this proactive consultant during under the guidance uh, under the roof of proactive consultants it has uh, the training program has been mentioned by Patrick Paws. The, the, the highlight of the training programs are sewing machine operators trainability test the starts with the training uh, trainability test of the sewing machine operator then evaluation then procedures then training sizes then the stamina and operational training and different methods of the training these are the highlights of this particular training program done by coined by Patrick Post. Then uh, next one is a fast track training method which has been uh, followed in the some good companies in, uh, in uh, South India that is the training uh, time has been given as 3 weeks and it starts with the HR induction program then dexterity test then after minimum intelligence test then bag making and doing the follow up. Then uh, final one we are going to speak about the, the training program what has been uh, being provided by clothing industry training authorities is the CETA name is the CETA the, the, the name of the program is sewing practice and the training time is 25 hours. So in this particular training program the major highlights are the fundamental knowledge of sewing machinery tools and equipments health and safety issues in sewing basic sewing quality uh, quality requirements, sewing skill development, methods in controlling different types of the sewing uh, machines and sewing of different types of the seams and uh, seams and stitches. So these are the different type of the sewing exercises, sewing uh, uh, training programs have been, uh, has been uh, done by, has been already uh, their existence since 1940 to 2016. So this has been from uh, this is the duration where almost 12 to 12 types of the training providers has been given their training programs and every training program have, has its unique existence. The duration of the training exercises varies from minimum 25 hours that has been mentioned by CETA to maximum 28 days that is a basic and skill training along with the uh, along with the four weeks of follow up depends on the training curve which has been given by KSA Technopack. So uh, we can easily see that the duration varies from 24 weeks to 24 sorry 20, uh, 24, uh, uh, 24 hours to 4 to 24 weeks. So this is the training different type of the training programs has been provided and with the different uh, type of the different uh, 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 we can say that different durations has been given for different training programs. The impact factor is also is, is very very important about the training program which training has been uh, wh what what are the contents are there with the different training programs and and what is the impact factor is there what is the you know we will discuss about the one training providers that in detail uh, to understand that the how the complete training program has been built up.
The similarly for other training providers are also given their own uh, method of the trainings. So, uh, we, uh, once we talk about the while most of the swing exercises are prescribed on single needle flat bed drop feed swing machines, few expectations, uh, exceptions uh, suggest overlock also and use of work aids also in, in, the, in their training programs. Kurt Salman Associate that is the KSA designed the formal employee training programs for, uh, for the uh, its clients using the concept of advanced analytical method of the training that is double AMT what I have discussed earlier. The KSA has used this training method across a broad product spectrum to mix uh, such type of improvements the, such, such as which has been claimed by KSA that 50 to 60 percent of the reduction in the time required for the train and operators to uh, productivity level, 50 to 70 percent reduction in the cost of the successful training. They have also mentioned that the 300 percent increase in the number of successful trainees and 25 to 30 percent increase in training productivity during the training process. So, these are the uh, highlights what has been mentioned by KSA. If the double AMT program what has been uh, the double AMT that stands for an advanced analytical method of training, if this is being used, this is being uh, successfully implemented in any company, the, uh, the KSA has been, has already mentioned that these are the parameters, uh, these are the uh, benefits a company will get out of users of this training pro program. The training program offered by uh, KSA has been divided in, into uh, seven broad parts. The first is starts with the basic training, basic exercises are there. The list of the basic exercises are there which is basically for the paper and fabric exercises. Different type of paper exercises are there, almost 11, 11 type of the paper exercises are there followed by 5 to 6 types of the fabric exercises are there. These paper and fabric exercises, the main aim of the paper and fabric exercises are basically to, uh, to make the operator to make the operator equipped in handling the uh, or doing the straight stitches, doing the curve stitches, had the comfort level of doing the zigzag stitches, ha, uh, operators would have the comfort level of doing of the uh, circular stitches and all in paper as well as in fabric. So, this is the main aim of the basic stitches. In basic stitches, along uh, before the basic stitches, operators used to get the, the training on handling how to handle a machine. The, the basic demonstration about the machine, so basic uh, about the machine parts, so and then after operator starts with the paper exercise followed by the fabric exercise. Next one is the skill exercise. Exit exercises are basically given to the operators on particular, uh, particular garments parts. It is like some garments parts used to be given to the operators and those garment parts operator has used to get trained in those garment parts like maybe cuff, the operator will be doing the uh, maybe uh, if you take the example of the garment as shirt, the operator will be doing the collar and the stitch, he will be equipped with the doing the collar top stitch, he may be equipped with the doing the cuff, cuff run and stitch, he will be equipped with the doing the, so similar type the like uh, he will be, he will be doing the in the mock garment, he will be making the, making the uh, different parts of the shirt or different part of trousers, different part of uh, maybe t-shirts. So, these are the part of the skill exercises. After the skill exercises, once the operator will complete the basic exercises, then skill exercises and kindly remember that these all exercises are time bound. For each and every exercises, operator ha has, has some uh, target has been given. During that particular target, during that particular time, with the, that particular quality parameters, if operator will achieve that particular quality parameters, if operator will achieve that particular during that particular time he will be able to complete that particular job then only he will be go to next level. So, for the even for paper exercise all the paper exercises all the fabric exercises all the excel exercises there is timeline is given and operator has to complete that timeline before operators will move to the next level. After the excel exercises of next one is the operational exercise that is the trial production. Operator will be doing uh, will be given the some pieces for the trial production, trial production normally uh, they used to get the inferior uh, fabric to make the complete the same garment. In the trial production the similar like it is a mock of the production. 
where basically operator uh, the one line used to be set of the suppose uh, the the factory is doing working on the PVU progressive bundle unit system. So the line will be set by the uh, in the trial production also the line will be set keeping in mind of the PVU concept. So where every operator will be allocated for the different jobs and that job has to be done by the operator on the line in the line. So the operator will have the feel will get the feel about the he is or she is working on the sewing line that is a mock mock production will be done in that particular line that is a trial production that is known as trial production during the and it will be it is known as the operational exercises. After this the performance development operator will be sent to uh, different uh, to the real uh, on the soft floor where operator will be uh, will uh, will has to will be given a different oper operations will be allocated for different operations and for each and every operations the training curve will be made. The training curve is basically uh, for every operations the training curve calculation is there which has been coined by uh, KSA. It varies from 4 weeks to 24 weeks like the EGR operations are there maybe the in that case the training curve is of 4 weeks. So training curve of 4 weeks or 24 weeks says that this in this particular operation operator will get the performance level of more than 70 to 80 percent in that particular 4 weeks of the time or operator will get graduated in, in 20, uh, suppose he has he got a job for for which training uh, weeks are 24 so after 24 weeks of the time operator will get uh, attain this particular performance level which is the target performance level has been uh, will be set by the factory. Then uh, the operator will also train on the stamina development, stamina development will be done for the operator that is that is known as stamina run in this particular case. In the stamina run operators will be given uh, the pieces they will be doing the uh, real production the, uh, in the soft floor and in their operator will, will be initially operator will be uh, will be uh, the capacity study will be done for the operator based on the one one cycle of the garment like the single cycle time will be calculated for the operator and capacity study will be done for the operator after doing the capacity study operator will be given the 15 minutes of the stamina run like the 15 minutes of the time 15 minutes of the target like within 15 minutes time he is supposed to make these many pieces so what is the what is the target how much is actual he has done then after half an hour of the stamina run with the half an hour time then if he attends the 15 minutes of the pieces uh, stamina run he will able to achieve the 15 minutes of the stamina run then after 30 minutes of the stamina run will be given to the operator after that it will be given for 1 hour then 2 hours then 4 hours then for 8 hours which is a complete week uh, complete day stamina run will be will be done if he will successfully he will able to do it in 8 hours of the time then it is also known as the operator is as ready operator is as uh, as per the expectation what is the expectation was there as per the expectation is there if there is some problem happens with the operator he is not able to understand he is not able to reach the whatever the target has given then stamina run will again go back to the 15, 15 minutes again it will be slowly gradually it will be increased to 30 minutes if he will attend the 15 minutes of the target then 30 then 1 hour then 2 hours uh, as on. Then we are having the follow ups and uh, the uh, graphing of the pro uh, pro progress we will do the graphing of the progress and follow ups on the training curve it will be done for every day and every week weekly we will we will we will understand we will see that how how much deviation is there from actual then the plan of the curve. So in the in the graph we will have the actual graph actual uh, curve we will have and we will have the plan. So against the plan what is the actual how much deviation is there that will be that can be seen in the follow up and graphing the progress and if there is some some lacuna is there there is some problem is operator is facing then after in that case operator will be again sent for retraining he will be again sent for the retraining if the he is not able to achieve the required level of the performance what is required against the target so these are the basically the different different steps are there in which is mentioned in double amt which is coined by ksa 
technopack then in the basic sizes development what in the basic sizes the developing the developing the hands and finger ability the paper exercises machine exercises fabric sizes are taken into consideration with a duration of, so each and every exercises are that some durations are there like the basic size the duration of the basic size is 10 to 12 days where operators has to handle paper and machine exercises and fabric has also taken into consideration so total time has been allocated for basic sizes is 10 to 12 days the similarly the skill exercises the the duration of this particular skill exercises has also been mentioned the the skill exercise aim is to develop the skills in key operations of the product and uh, the style to be shown in the plant as the specific skill groups gradual increase in the difficulty level will be given to the operators and exercises in the single needle lock stitch machine exercises in the overlock and any other specific machine will be given to the operators so now operators will be uh, along with the single basic basic sizes are exercises as we main, mainly done in the single lock stitch machine and overlock machine the over the specialized machine has been used has been uh, 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 has been given in that in this stage that is skill exercises in during the skill exercises operators will be given the work different uh, dif uh, difficulty level will be gradually increase during this particular uh, phase and this phase the duration of this phase is of 5 days of maximum of the 5 days so 10 to 12 days we have discussed about the duration is of basic size 5 days is the duration of the skill, uh, skill exercises then it comes with the turn of the operation exercise that is known as the trial production where the operator is moved to the sign machine in the line reviewed threading and the cleaning of the machines demonstration of the techniques using the method documented by the engineer train operators to unstitch neatly and redo the operations and if the quality is inappropriate certificate uh, certificate of operation uh, and uh, operate uh, on duration of the maximum this duration is of six days maximum duration of this particular exercise is of six days of the trial production or the you can say the mock production after this trial production the next is the next stage of the training is the performance development during the stage this stage the method assure, assurance complies with the method check uh, checklist and we are going to do the three three capacity studies the three capacity studies has been uh, will be given in this particular uh, uh, performance development stage and uh, eight quality checks will be will be done for this particular stage and one one every hour three quality drills and uh, performance measurements and daily progress summary takes place the duration depends on the training curve the duration of this particular uh, performance development depends on a training curve as i will discuss the training curve varies from 4 weeks to 24 weeks so if the the training curve is 4 weeks the duration will be accordingly will be allocated for this particular performance development if it's 24 weeks accordingly it will be developed for that the next stage is the stamina development it is being done for the method assurance complies with the uh, method checklist again here also we are having the three capacity studies eight quality checks one quality drill, eight stamina runs using the 50% rule. That is the 50% rule has been has been coined in, is mentioned in the uh, there. And then after the uh, performance, it depends on the curve from 50% capacity to 100% capacity. So like the 50% capacity to 100% capacity, that is the graduate level for this particular uh, stage has been given. The next one is the graphing the training curve. The main aim of the training curve graph is also to do the method assurance, comply with the method document, the performance follow up, daily graphing of the uh, performance and quality. It is done when the operator's capacity is between 30 to 50 percent. And the final stage of the whole training program is the is graduation, where method assurance, two capacity study, eight quality checks, four uh, uh, stamina run, four stamina run, <coughs> and uh, or at least two hours of the bundle by bundle follow up, performance follow up. Uh, graphing uh, takes place here it has it has to be make sure that operator has plenty of work to achieve target the duration of this particular is of five days the duration uh, of the total uh, training curves varies from 50 uh, 50 percent of the capacity to 100 percent of the performance so this is the total duration uh, the duration varies for the this training curve 
So this is we have discussed about the double AMT training program in, in detail and the double AMT what are the different seven steps have been followed and each and every step they have the certain timeline, they have the target and for each and every exercise also they have the target and then uh, after the basic exercise then the skill exercise then they have the trial production after the trial production uh, product, uh, operators are moved to the uh, <coughs> of the so soft floor soft floor we are doing the stamina run the performance development then follow up these all things will be done as per the as as mentioned in the double mt uh, double mt manual that stands for advanced analytical method of training as uh, what as mentioned by the ksa technopack so uh, similarly a uh, different training provi providers has given their own different training the basic aim of the training is to train the operators and make them equip them in the area of of uh, any defined area if the we talk about the swing machine operators training then the we uh, the the training equips them in that particular uh, different type the different type of the swing handle effectively different type of the swing machines with the quality, whatever the quality target has given, whatever the production target has given. So, the the in uh, the these training programs make and equip the operators uh, with giving the uh, the knowledge about the quality about the the uh, different I I tools like the performance SAM calculation of the SAM capacity the uh, utilization these all. Uh, these all uh, IE tools, the operators will have the hands-on experience after going through the formal training and they will also understand about the different parameters of garment production, different uh, methods of the garment production, different type of the layouts. So these all things will be given in the classroom training also. So this is all about the training program uh, which directly influence the, uh, the, the quality and productivity, definitely quality and productivity will be, will, will directly link with the training. If the operators are training, uh, the training of the operators are done well, the understanding of the operators will, will, will be good, then definitely operator will be in the position to do good and they will able to perform well in the line and they will able to achieve the target and achieve the quality parameters whatever has given to the operators. Industrial engineering we are going to talk about. I or industrial engineering apparel industry is a trend in which helps to improve the industry in production in terms of productivity, efficiency of, uh, of the factory. There are various responsibility are there in the for the industrial engineers. And these responsibilities are planning a layout. The layout planning is the line layout planning, the factory layout planning, the department layout planning is the prime responsibility of uh, industrial engineering. They used to take the concept of industrial engineering in deciding the layout. How much area should be there for one work session? Like one work session, we are giving the 4 feet by 4 feet. That is the 16 square feet for one workstations. Similarly, we are having the aisle space, aisle space area like the, we are having the primary aisle, we have the, having the secondary aisle. The primary aisle is the major movement from uh, of the of the machine, man and uh, material. The secondary aisle within the line, within the two lines, we are giving the secondary aisle for the movement of, you know, lesser movement of where lesser movement or adjacent lines uh, material man and machine can move. Then the layout planning as I was discussed that layout planning is very very important part of industrial engineering. Then monitoring the production flow system like what are the flow systems are there what are the production flow systems are being followed in the in the in the company the monitoring of the production flow system is very very important for as a point of industrial engineering. Then Industry engineers decides the machines and attachment for all the styles and work it also. They decide the what machine has to be placed for which which operation, what depends on the garment, what attachment has to be put, what folder, what attachment, work work it has to be put for that particular operation. Different operations require the different type of the machines, different type of the work aids, different type of the attachments, different type of the folders. 
So these innovations are the part of industry engineer to make, make the, to systemize, to channelize and to keep, keep tap on the each and every operation so that we can have the better productivity and better quality. Then the PA system like what type the systems, whatever the pay systems are there, whether it is a, is a salaried operators, we are giving the salary to the operators or we are having the contract operators, we are giving the, uh, the wages to the operators. These all pay systems, the role of industry engineer is very crucial in deciding those pay systems and deciding how much has to be paid to whom based on the target, how much target the each and every operators have achieved. Monitoring and improve the operator, like the to monitor and uh, improve the operator performance is very very uh, important part for the industry engineering. They are industry engineer are doing the skill development like skill improvement. The industry engineer is taking part in the stamina run where basically the operators if the operators are lacking they are not able to meet the target they are going through the stamina run where they are having the 15 minutes, one half an hour, one hour, two hours, four hours and eight hours like that they, the operator is getting the, the target for you know in the place of only hourly or two hours target they are getting the target starting from the small uh, time that is the 15 minutes then 30 minutes if the operator is meeting the target then it is moved to the 30 minutes target then one hour target like that. So monitoring and improve the operator performance is, is is a key uh, one of the key uh, role and responsibility of industry engineers. Then we are having the operator training. The training of an operator in cutting, sewing, finishing is important because to intake the operator into soft floor before intaking the operator for the soft floor, the training of the operator is required. Although nowadays we are having the separate training centers. The so many of uh, factory they are having the separate training centers even we are getting the trained operator from the vocational institutes but to train the operators on the floor like the retraining apart from the basic training the we are having the retraining the retraining happens inside the factory where basically the operators have any problem then the person used to go for the get the training on the same thing so that is part of the retraining the cross training if the the operator has to become the multi skill we have to make the operator as multi skill that cross training has to be done for the operator so industrial engineer is the person who used to decide which operator will go for what type of operation on which uh, in which are the areas are there where this operator has to get op, uh, get exposure depends on the future style like the suppose right now we are working on the basic cert now the company has got some stylization in the maybe in the top so maybe uh, due to that installation new operations has come up and the factory operators are not knowing they have not having the hands on experience on that new type of the operations. So this is the responsibility of industry engineer to take few operators out of the, the complete lot and train them on those operations which are the new operations which is going to come in the future styles. So that is a part of the cross training to make the operator multi skilled. Then after this we have the production control systems, different type of the production control systems are there like different MIS has to be used in the, uh, in the um, uh, production floor that MIS has, has to be taken care by industry engineer. Industry engineer used to take care about that, that management information system to understand like the hourly production then uh, daily production, then uh, factory production like uh, they are using the cutting uh, cut order plan, what, what is the cut order plan, then what is the cutting efficiency, then uh, to gauging the what is the efficiency of the sewing, what is the efficiency of finishing. So these all based on the target industry engineer used to go through these uh, you know different type of the MIS plan. So after the responsibility of apparel engineer or industry engineer we talk about the need of apparel engineering in apparel factories. Why it is so important that factory is now uh, taking apparel engineers or industry engineers? What are the roles, responsibility? We have already discussed that. So the need of the uh, apparel engineers is basically the factory requires the standardization of methods. The method has to be standardized 
so that whoever will come will fit in that particular method. Method document is documented. So method analysis has done for each and every operations and even the operator's manpower is keep changing but the operation, uh, the method will remain the same which has to be followed. The, the standard operating procedure used to be made by the apparel in the engineers. Then the standardization of equipment and the conditions, what are the equipments are there, how we are going to standardize that particular equipment based on the different type of the operations, different type of the skills required for that particular operation. Accordingly, we are going to put that particular uh, equipment on the place. Then production scheduling to work accurately helps to understand how long it takes to complete the work. The scheduling of the production is important for to, so that the, the work can be done accurately and which will also help that how long this work will take to complete the complete. And then uh, fair payment to the employee. If the company has to give the fair, fair payment, then definitely the industry engineer has the logic behind that the payment. The against the target, they have set the target against the target how much operator is getting, what should be the uh, salary, what should be the uh, pay, uh, pay scale, what is the grading, what is the rating, these all things has to be done by the industry engineer. And accordingly the payment system, a uh, fair payment can be done. Then we talk about some basics about the industry engineer, what are the uh, industry engineers are doing. The capacity study, capacity is the capacity study to do the capacity study of operator like the capability, the capacity is nothing is a capability to do the capacity study of the operator to understand that what level the operator is. If there is some after the capacity study we could, we, we found out that there is there is a problem in the capacity is there in the operator but he is not able to perform. So there is some capacity gap. So if suppose operator two terms are here in the capacity study, we talk about the capacity gap and here is the training gap. So if you talk about the training gap or capacity gap, the capacity gap is basically the capacity where the operator has the capacity, operator has the capacity but operator is not able to perform or operator is not getting meeting the target. So even the capacity is there in the op op for the operator. Suppose take example, as per the single cycle time, operator can produce whatever the target has given. Suppose the target has given as in 4 8 hours or 4 80 minutes, the target is 4 80 pieces. And the operator's single cycle time to do that particular operation from picking to align to sew to dispose, again next picking, the complete cycle takes maybe 50 seconds of the time. So, 1 minute is the target and 50 seconds operator is able to com uh, complete that particular operation that is a single cycle uh, as per the single cycle time. So, where is the problem? He should easily, he should be able to easily produce 480 pieces, more than 480 pieces but he is not able to produce. So, that is the basically the during the capacity study we will, we will find out the where is the capacity gap, why he is not able to produce. He has the problem, maybe he has the problem with the stamina. He is not able to pr produce the piece with the same same efficiency or same label, same performance. He is not able to, con consistency is missing in that particular operator or there is some problem in the stamina run. So, uh, the op operator will be sent for the stamina run, the stamina run will be done for the operator or he had having some external issues he had having some health problem, whatever the reasons are there that can be easily find out and to find out the, do the capacity gap. Then next is the training gap. We will find out the, where is the training gap. Training gap is basically the operator does not have the capacity to reach that particular level. Operator is, if the sum of the garment, the standard time of the garment is 1 minute operator is doing that garment, he is able to perform, make the garment in 2 minutes time. So he is very slow operator, he does not have the capacity to reach to that particular level. In that case, the 
the training gap is there we will find we will find out how much is the training gap in this case maybe the training gap is 50% so that is the 50% of the training gap is there so those 50% of the training gap how to fill it, fulfill it so that particular gap we will we will fulfill by giving the additional training to that operator so he needs the training so so the two terms are there that is capacity gap and that is training gap first case the capacity gap operator has the capacity but he is not able to perform due to some different reasons and second case is the training gap where operator doesn't have the capacity to meet the target so these two terms are there these both the terms will be taken care by industry engineer then after doing the method study method study is very very important we will discuss in later on later uh, 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 later half of this uh, particular lecture that how method study is important what are the things are there in the method study and what our uh, industry engineer does in the method study then time study time study is a is a tool of work measurement that is also we will discuss in the later half how the time study so these method study time study capacity study then method engineering like the do the engineering of the method do the method analysis to understand what is the problem is there what what should be the uh, ideal method for this particular operations so that has to be done then workflow the flow of the work how the flow of the work should be there what is the sequence of the work should be there the flow of the work has to be decided the sequence of the work which operation has to be done after what after this operation which operation has to be done which what what are the dependable operation what are the independent uh, independent operation which which operations are the bottleneck operation so accordingly whether we should keep the bottleneck operation in the beginning or whether we should shift the bottleneck operation in the last with different theories are there some theory say like the we should keep the bottleneck operation in the beginning so that everybody's attention should be there some some theory say like that we should not uh, we should not uh, just disturb the line we should let the line to run with the with the pace and we will keep the bottleneck operation in the last so these all theories are there different theories are there which is uh, which has to be taken care and these all are the part of the industry engineering so they used to decide what are the bottleneck operations are there how to make the bottleneck operation how to uh, uh, make make that you know this operation as a uh, uh, so that the operation should not be no more bottleneck operation what are the work aid what are the tools what are the attachment what are the folder if any additional manpower is required so we'll put the manpower so these all things have to be done by the industry engineer then balancing the line the line balancing is very very important to understand best on the pitch time they used to do the line balancing we will discuss about the pitch time how to what are the pitch time what is the attack time in later half which is related to the line balancing line balancing is also a, a a tool of the operator where the operator has to do the line balancing has to understand that how to do the line balancing for that particular operation uh, for that particular style then <coughs> Uh, we will discuss our WIP. WIP is work in process or work in progress. That to maintain the optimal WIP is also a responsibility of a of a industrial engineer. If the WIP is more, that is also not correct in the line. Or if WIP is less, also it may have the adverse impact for the other other uh, other manpower, other operators. Because WIP is less, then definitely there are chances like that in the case of the the breakdown machine breakdown in the case of any adverse situation the whole line will sit idle so we are maintaining a certain wip what should be the optimum wip that has to be decided by the industry engineer then we discussed the plant layout earlier that plant layout is very very important and that is the part of the industry engineer where the industry engineers used to do the plant layout for uh, for the, the the factory and the plant layout and lay line layout line layout we are doing uh, it has to be done in the micro level and plant layout has to be done in the broader level then uh, the industrial engineer as the major issue major part of the industry engineer is the work study so industrial engineering engineers do the work study and they used to work study is basically the generic term for method and work measurement techniques which are used to examination of human work in its context so this is the part of the industry engineering to understand to do the work study 
So, as you discussed like the work study has the two parts, one is the method study, second is the work measurement. Method study is basically about to record, to compare and six the best method. So, we have method study is basically they are recording the data so that it can be compared and then after, after the comparison we, uh, the, in the, during the method study, the, we have to find out that which is the best method. And work measurement is basically the two things are there, one is the time study and second is the synthetics data. So, basically work measurement is basically to understand that how long this particular job will take. Method study will decide the best method and after we decide the which is the best method, then after in that particular method, how much time it will take to complete the operation that is the work measurement. So, method study have two pillars, one is method, uh, sorry, work study has two pillars, one is method study, second is work measurement. Next, we are moving for the history of the work study. What is the history of the work study? How it has come into existence? The moment we talk about the history of the work study, the name comes as the Taylor's use of the time study. The Taylor, it is generally agreed that time study had its beginning in the machine shop of medieval steel company in 1888 and that Frederick W. Taylor was the originator. Taylor's employment with the uh, Midwell Steel Company, con, uh, company led him to the conclusion that system under which the factory left much to be desired. Therefore, shortly after he became general foreman of the plant, he decided to make a determined effort to change the management system so that the interest of the workmen and the management should be become the same. So, it is a win-win situation. In that case, he, he thought about the do some win-win situation where the productivity can also be increased so that management can also earn more money and second thing is that to, to and uh, worker will also be happy because they will get the better salary and packages because uh, if the management will earn more then definitely they will be agreed to give more salary or wages to their operators. So, he had, Taylor has taken it, this one, to, to make happy to management as well as operators. So, he, he had something in his mind and that, that thing has come up later on. So, uh, Taylor obtained permission from the per, uh, president of the Medwell Steel Company to spend some money in the careful scientific study of the time required to do various kind of the work. So, that time he has taken the permission from the uh, president of that, that company. So, do the technique, uh, some techni use of the techniques of the time study. The selection of the best worker for each particular task, then he the select the best uh, oper operators for each particular task, then training, teaching and developing the workmen in place of former practice in which worker selected his own work and trained himself accordingly. So, he had selected the workers, what is the selection took place, the training, teaching and development of the workmen has taken place. Then development of a spirit of hardly cooperation between the management and man in the carrying on of the activity in accordance with the principle of developed science. So, this has been taken care and then after the, the this work study has come into existence. Then uh, along with the work study, another term is as the motion study. Motion study is basically developed by Gilbert. The term micro motion study was originated by Gilbert and the technique was first made public at a meeting of American Society of Mechanical Engineers in 1912. The micro motion study is the study of fundamental elements or subdivision of an operation by means of an motion picture camera and a timing device which accurately indicates the time interval on the motion picture films. Gilworth also developed two techniques that is cycle graphic and chrono cycle graphic analysis for the study of motion path of an operator. So, now after this uh, about the history of knowing the history of time study and motion study, we are moving further for this method study. So, method study as I discussed like the how a job to be done, this is the main thing. The method study, if you talk about the what, what is the basically the uh, introduction of method study. Method study is the process of subjecting work of systematic critical scrutiny 
to make it more effective and or more efficient. It is one of the keys to achieving productivity improvement. It was originally designed by analysis and improvement of repetitive manual work by it can be used for all types of activity at all levels of an organization. So now we talk about the, the some main steps are there in the method study. What are the different steps are there for the method study? First step of method study is known as select. So to we have to select that which job method analysis has to be done for which particular operation the analysis has to be done, the selection process. The work has to be studied. What work has to be studied that is the that comes under the step one that is selection or select. Second is the record. Record is basically all relevant information about the work. So the recording has to be done for what are the relevant informations are there about the work. How work is being done? What are the work aids are there? What are the attachments are there? What tools are there? Where is the picking? Where is the uh, align? How sewing is happening? How dispose is happening? The complete thing, the recording has to be done. Then examine the, examine this is the third, third, phase, uh, third step of this particular uh, analysis. Examine is about the, the examine whatever the recorded in, uh, information was there, the examine has to be done for that particular recorded information. The next is develop. So develop is basically an improved way of doing things. So the improved way of doing things which has to be developed. Okay. So where was the what things has been being done and what are the improved ways are there that has to be uh, that will be developed in the method analysis after the analysis and install the new method at standard practice. It is basically the stall the install the new method whatever the new method was there after the doing the recording analysis and then after we, we come to know that this is the best way to do this particular job. So the, that particular job has to be with the new method has to be installed. Then next is maintain. The new standard proactive has to be maintained so that the everybody will follow the, the same, uh, same method. If some uh, for this operation everybody will follow the, C, the this this method which is the best one method has been analyzed the cyclic process starts with a quick rough pass in which preliminary data are collected and examined subsequent passes provide the and handle more comp uh, comprehensive and more detailed data to obtain and analyze a more complete picture so uh, the select we have discussed about the steps the select what are the things are there the select the process to be studied selected and boundaries to are to be defined in the selection process we discuss then the recording we discuss about the, the process is to be recorded in specified chart and diagram here the recording has to be done with the different type of the charts are there we have the process chart we have the flow chart we have the and different type of diagrams are there like the flow diagram the string diagram so these has to be done these has to be uh, has to be followed once we are doing the recording the examine is basically the method of action of activities uh, and uh, in in uh, inventory activities so basically in examine we are going to examine that what is the purpose of this particular purpose, then place, then sequence of the operation, then person who is doing this particular operation. So these all are basically the part of the exam. After the exam, next is develop. The shortcomings of present process are brought out by the systematic questioning process that is combined with the knowledge relevant to the process being examined. So industrial engineer may have the knowledge required to make to may not have the adequate knowledge, they need to have a knowledge library to support their effort as well as access to the expert during the study period. Alternatives to the current activity which has the shortcomings are to be generated during this particular stage. And then further is moved to the evaluate, the alternatives are to be evaluated at this stage to find out their contribution to the efficiency of the process as well as effectiveness. 
and then further is to define the new method or process suggested has to be put down standard process sheets that are issued to the shop or department. And then it is an install, install is basically industry engineer of the method study person has to train the operators and their supervisor in the new method and participate in installing the method. And industrial engineer has to, the major challenge is that how to maintain that particular the method what has been, uh, uh, has been, uh, has been taken off, the best method ha what has been already analyzed. So, after analysis what is the best method has come up. To maintain this is, is a very, very important thing. The industry engineer has to conduct a periodic review of methods to observe modification bought into the install method by operators and supervisor. If they are beneficial, they has to be made part of the standard operating procedures. If they are not beneficial, supervisor has to be informed of the same to bring the method back to SOP. So, if it is beneficial, then it has to be continued. If it is not beneficial, then it has to be again, it has to be look on that particular method. Then we will talk about the principles of economy. After the method analysis, we will talk about the principles of economy. These, uh, the principles of economy have been organized into the following categories. The categories are body movement, positioning of jigs, tools and materials and design of jigs, tools and materials. So, basically here it is talk about the how the movement of body happens. In the body, what are the parts are there? What are the parts which is basically move? for the for the uh, for the operation like the picking align then dispose uh, sew and dispose so what are the body parts are there which is involved in that what are the like the finger movements are there then wrist movement are there then elbow movement is there then complete shoulder movement is there then upper tr trunk movement is there even if the we are doing the paddle so paddle we are the uh, the knee movements knee lifter we are using the knee movements are there then if you are using the paddle, the foot movement is there. So, these all movements has to be studied for it during in this particular motion economy. And then where we are going to position like the what is the position of jig, what is the position of tools, what is the position of materials and design of jigs and, uh, and, and equipments, these all has to be uh, will uh, has been studied in the this motion economy. Gilbert introduces these principles which apply to actual human motions and hence are applicable at elemental level. Then use of the motion a human body, we talk about the use of the human body. When is possible, the two hands should begin and complete their movement at the same time. The same, the two hands should not be idle at the same time time except during the period of rest. Motion of the arms should be symmetrical and in opposite direction and should be made simultaneously. Hand and body motion should be made at the lowest classification at which it is possible to work satisfactorily. Then momentum should be employed to help the worker but should be reduced to a minimum whenever it has to be overcome by muscular effort. So, these are the basically the, the use of motion economy. Then classification of the movement, the moment we talk about the classification of the movement was just now I was talking about the, there is a f some uh, like total five classes are given for the movements in the especially in this uh, in the motion economy and the pivots are there for each and every movement and what are the body parts are, uh, are moved in this particular motion. Knuckle movement, if you talk about knuckle movement, the finger movements are there. Then we have the wrist movement, there are the hand and above movements are there. Elbow is forearm and, and above. Shoulder is upper arm and above. And trunk is torso and above. So these are different movements are there, which is which takes place in this particular economy, uh, this particular motion economy. Then continuous curve movement are to be preferred here. If you talk about the continuous curve movement has to be preferred to straight line motion involving sudden and sharp change in the direction. Free swing movements are faster and easier and more accurate than restricted or controlled movement. Rhythm is essential 
to the smooth and automatic performance of a repetitive operation and work should be arranged so that eye movement are confined to a comfortable area without the need of frequent changes of focus. Then we will talk about the different arrangements are there. We are going to have the different of the arrangements of workplace. What are the, those arrangements are there? This different and fixed extension should be provided for all tools and materials to permit habit formation. Like for each and every tool, whichever is required, like the tweezer we are using, we are using the uh, screwdriver. So for each and every tool, there should be a fixed place where the person should not should be very much com uh, very much comfortable its habit it will become the habit that person will take the tools from that particular place tools and materials should be pre positioned to reduce searching gravity bin gravity feed bins and containers should be used to deliver the material as close to the point of use as possible Tools, materials and controls should be located within the maximum working area and as near to the worker as possible. The materials and tools should be arranged to permit the best sequence of motions. Like the motions, the materials and uh, tools should be, should be arranged in that case, uh, that, that position that it should be give the best sequence of the motions. The color of the workplace should be contrast with that of the work and thus it reduces the eye fatigue. Then drop deliveries or ejectors should be used wherever is possible so that operator do not, does not have to use his hand to dispose of the finishes, finished work. The provision should be made for adequate lighting and a chair of the type and height to permit good posture should be provided. The height of the workplace and the seat should be arranged to allow alternate standing and sitting. Then uh, after this uh, motion economy, we are moving to the method study. About the method study, what is the basically objective of method study? The improvement of processes and procedures. Basically the objective of method study is improvement of processes and procedures. The improvement of factory shop, workplace, layout and design of plant and equipments. The third we can talk about the economy in human effort and reduction of unnecessary effort. Improvement in use of materials, machine and manpower and development of better physical working environment. Next we talk about the about the after the method analysis we have finalized the method next step is basically the work measurement in the business world the work measurement is needed for planning the work of a workforce we have to plan the work how much work has to begin to what which work uh, how many workforce is required for this particular work so accordingly the planning has to be done so it is part of the work measurement then manning job how many people to decide how many workers it would need to complete a certain job that is the manning job how many operators how many helpers how many checkers how many uh, you know manpower total manpower is required to complete that particular job the manning has to be done then scheduling the task allocation allocated to the people like how how what are the task is there what are the how it has been scheduled so these things will be there for the people then costing the work for eliminating contract prices and costing the labor content in general then calculating the efficiency of productivity of the worker the workers efficiency and productivity has to be calculated then providing for return on possible incentive bonus payment schemes so this has to be uh, is a, as a part of the uh, work measurement then different tools are there we are using for the work measurement those tools are in the product analysis we are having the tools of that is operation bulletin we will discuss about the operation bulletin in detail then method description and quality specification then in 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 time and study next to next is basically the time study time study is basically the video 
time study we can do where the video camera is required and for stopwatch is required if the manual time study has to be done. Then time study worksheet is required for doing the time study. Then time study summary sheet is required where all the all the summary will be uh, all the things will be summarized and the motion time analysis summary is required for that. So these are the tools required for the time study. Then next is the workplace design. Workplace design sketch is required. Then workplace layout sketch is required and operation drawings are required. So in this particular uh, uh, this particular when we talk about the tools for the work measurement. Now we will move to understand that what is the operation bulletin. The operation bulletin is a documented form of sequence of operations in a product. It contains all the information about the machine required and the total number of operations total number of operators required. So these are the contents used to be there in the operation bulletin where basically we talk about the what is the how many machines are required, then how many total number of operators are required, then how many operations are there. These all record used to be there. This is the record documented form of operations in the sequence. The operator bulletin contains the standard time for each operations. It contains the standard time like the SAM for each and every operations. Operation bulletin also contains some other parameters as which which is uh, which is uh, which which are basically output per pieces per day in terms of pieces per day, target efficiency, what is the target efficiency, the minutes per day, what is the minutes per day, how many minutes per day is working time is there, what is the clock time. Total standard time, what is the total standard time is there, total number of workplaces. So in a simple word we can say that operation bulletin is a record of equipment type, it is record of machine attachments, it is a record of workplace engineering, and it is a record of standard time for each operations. It can be extended to include also hourly or period target for each operation, manpower requirement equipment requirements. The usage of operation bulletin where we are going to use the operation bulletin, we it is it should cover all the operation that can be directly related to single unit of a product that is spread and cut, swing including norm, uh, manual operations, finish and pack. So basically the spreading and cutting also we require the, the operation bulletin for even how much time spreading time is taking what are the equipments we are going to use, how many manpowers are there, how we are going to balance that particular the, the, the in, the, uh, in the cutting. So the similarly for the sewing, for the finishing, for the packing. So everywhere the requirement of operation bulletin is there that is basically which will tell the and accordingly the target for each and every operation used to be decided. The operator bulletin is a uh, fundamental planning tool used to many functions such as capacity planning, method engineering, line planning, performance measurement, manpower planning, investment ap appraisal, then after it has gone for incentive payment, factory loading. The operation bulletin should be developed at the earlier stage of product development. It has to be done at the earlier stage of the product development. So now in the work measurement, we talk about the time study. After the operation bulletin, we will talk about the time study. Time study is a work measurement technique for recording the, the times and rate of working for element of specified job carried out under specific conditions. So basically here is, a, is, a, is, is operation bulletin we are uh, in, a, in time study basically we are going to record that how much time is each and every operation will take. The basic steps of time study procedure are basically the survey job content, we have to survey that how much job content is there, makes a plan, the plan has to be done, define elements, what are the elements are there, like we discuss about the major elements like the picking, align, sewing and dispose, these are the major elements are there, apart from that somewhere like we are doing the both the slips, we are making the both the slips, we are attaching the both the slips, in that case the first we will uh, we will take one sleeve maybe we will take the left sleeve left sleeve will be picked we will pick the first left sleeve then it has to be aligned with the body then the the sleeve has to be so 
and then we are not going to dispose it. We are going to pick another that is the right sleep because the same operator is doing for the left and right sleep. So we are going to again pick the right sleep and then that is basically the again the, the process that re-picking is there, the realignment will be there, re-sewing will be there and then after dispose will be there. Then measurement uh, upper, uh, define after the define uh, the elements measuring the elements what are the elements are there what are the uh, you know what are the elements and what are how much elements row how much picking time is there how much align time is there that has to be measured then find out the basic minute then after the we have to find out the basic minute using the concept of rating also and define the, uh, determine the allowances what are the allowances are there and examine the standard time for the operation. So we can say about that here what happens in the complete process of the time study goes like this where basically we have selected the operation whatever the operation has been selected. So selection of operation has been done and after the operation has been selected then the, we have to understand that what are the elements are there in that particular each and every operation in that. So elements we have found out the elements, elements has been find out. So elements may be we, these are the elements are there in that particular operation. Then after that particular element that is uh, the elements are picking, align, sew and dispose. Suppose these are the four elements are there. So for that the time will be taken for each and every element. Picking how much time it takes, align how much time it takes, sewing how much time it takes, dispose how much time it takes. And then the recording will be done for that particular element like uh, for picking we will take the cycles 1 cycle, 2, 3, 4 like that 15 cycles has been taken for picking. The same way alignment 15 cycles has been taken. Then for uh, sewing another 15 cycles will be taken and then dispose also again 15 cycles will be taken. So after we have taken the 15 cycles we are going to that is called single cycle time. We will get the single cycle time that is single cycle time. Once the single cycle time has been taken then that particular single cycle time if some operations are there which is basically not uh, which is be, uh, either very high or very low maybe very high because the operator was doing that particular operation and the it got some problem happens in between. So that we are going to have the standard operation standardization is uh, we are going to do. So in that case if the operation is very high or very low that operation has to be taken out from the reading. So after every single cycle time we are going to do the average uh, sorry single cycle time we will do the average single cycle time that is uh, average single cycle time. So every single cycle time will be find out of that each and every element and then every single cycle time will be multiplied by rating to find out the basic minute. So we will find out the basic minute if we will multiply by the every single cycle time with the rating and then after basic minute has come out then to find out the standard time basic minute after the basic minute it will be another allowances will be added in that to find out the standard minute. So basically the, this way the, the, uh, the, the basic minute we uh, basic minute uh, the calculation done and then after we will do the uh, we will do the determine the allowances and establish the standard time for the operation then st standard time for the operation will be established. Steps in time study. So we have the different steps are there in time study which has to be followed uh, to do it systematically. The first step of the time study is survey job content. The excess uh, correct nature of the constituent to be measured, correct method, operating conditions and quality. The, the survey means that to assess that what are the correct method, whether the correct method is, is being done, then 
or what are the operating conditions are there, what are the quality parameters are there. These all thing has to be understand, the industry engineers should understand that about, an, uh, about, about the job. What are the quality parameters are there, what are do's, what are don'ts are there. So that once he is, he should be familiar with the, what are the operation, what operation he is going to analyze. Then next is the make a plan, the program by which all uh, constituents can be measured economically and accurately. He has to make a plan so that the, in that particular plan, the whatever the, uh, you know, it can be done economically and accurately. Then next is the define elements, breaking down the operations into elements, elements uh, together should cover the whole job and should be selected as per convenience of the object uh, observation, measurement, analysis and synthesis. So basically the define the element, what elements we have design, uh, defined like for one operation I have taken the example, I have defined the elements, different type of the elements are there, different movements are there. So those element has to be taken, has to be defined first and then we have to do the time study on those elements. The elements will differ, it will change, but basic four elements what I discussed like the picking, align, sewing and dispose. Apart from that, if the operator is doing the both the sides like the sleeve, he is doing the both the sides of the sleeve he is doing or he is doing the side seam operation for both the sides. In that case, the, the elements will add, keep adding up. Then next is the measuring the elements, measuring with the time device and recording the, the rate and time of each element repeated in sufficient volume to provide reliable data covering all expected data. So basically the measurement of the element has to be done and the recording of rate and time for each element has to be done. The next is the find out the basic minute. Basic minute has to be done based on the uh, calculation that is the basic minute calculation we have already discussed like the basic minute calculations are basically every single cycle time will be multiplied by a rating. So to neutralize the rating factor if the operator is slow or operator is fast it does not make a will change the standard. The standard is basically whatever the rating factor if you will multiply by the rating factor it will give the standard time and in the it will give the basic minute. So to uh, then after the basic minute has been uh, determined, next is the determine the allowances such as the machine delay allowance, personal fatigue allowance and uh, to uh, make over and the basic minute of the operation. So you we will add these all allowances and along with that bundle handling time will also be added. So this will give the, the standard time. Now next they establish the standard time for the operation and after that the standard time has to be established and different basic concepts are there like the, the SAM, the SAM is basically standard allowed minute, then we are having, we, we talk about the SAM that is stands for standard allowed minute, then MDA is there which stands for machine delay allowance, then here we have P and F D is personal fatigue and delay. So different allowances are there, then after we have here the bundle handling time BST stands for bundle handling time. So these, these allowances are there which has to be added along with the, it has been added with the basic minute and the BST will be added here. So basically these all things will be added to make the SAM and apart from that we are having the, we are before the B, uh, AACT will be multiplied by rating to give the BM. AACT full form of AACT is average single this stands for average 
single cycle time so this is basically the calculation these are the basically the allowances are there this is the every single cycle time and the bst will be added so it will give the sam value <coughs> tsct stands for target single cycle time tsct also we are using for target single cycle time so we have the basic concepts are there the basic concept uh, different basic concepts are there the the formula of the sam then formula of the efficiency the formula of the performance these all things can be done once the time study has been done and the data of the time study based on the data of the time study we can have the calculation of the sam the the sam is basically the addition if you talk about the sam is basically as ct into rating then it has been it has been multiplied by 1 plus mda plus pfd and it will be further added by bht so from here we will get the sam formula and uh, other formulas like the clock time we have the capacity the performance utilization efficiency has been discussed in the subsequent uh, other content other units also <coughs> so uh, next is basically after this we are having the uh, how to calculate these these uh, sam to calculation of uh, uh, ast to do the recording and all we required uh, time study sheet time study sheet is required time study sheet is required where basically uh, that time study sheet we have the data all the data will be we will capture the all the data in the time study sheet here one more factor was there which has been uh, uh, used to calculate the basic minute the factor is basically the rating rating normally has to be multiplied by ast ast into rating this gives the basic minute the rating is basically uh, the how uh, the the if you talk uh, we will talk about the rating the rating corresponded to average rate at which operator will naturally work at a job so this is the average rate or normal pace of the operator naturally this is not naturally work at a particular job provided they know and other to the specified methods the method is specified the operator has to follow that particular job he would be knowing that particular job and following that particular job and provided they are motivated to apply themselves to their work so they are motivated also to apply themselves on that particular job british standard provide the 0 to 100 scale for rate and 0 represents no work and 100 is for the you know the normal work so uh, it can be rating can be 50 it can be 125 so the rating is slow rating can be 50 fast rating can be 125 130 140 so this way we can do the time study and we can calculate the data we can find out the standard time for during using the time study we have one more concept that is known as gsd gsd stands for the next concept we are going to discuss about that is called gsd is is very important uh, the data basically Uh, we can get the smv value here we will get the smv value using the gsd software it's a software stands for gsd stands for general swing data so basically general swing data is a uk uh, gsd is a uk company which is based in north of england it is active in more than 62 countries and have more than 5000 customers which is worldwide and they have the more than 12000 formally licensed gsd practitioner in the world what has been claimed by gsd so gsd methodology if you talk about the gsd methodology how gsd is giving the the result how gsd is calculating the smv so gsd has starts with the gsd codes the gsd codes are given for each and every activity they have the gsd codes are given and that particular code has to be used 
Then second is the basically the operations. What are the operations are there? That operations has to be uh, has to be given. I think uh, one minute. So general swing data. If you talk about the methodology, what how the general swing data works? The basically GSD works with the codes. The GSD is a scientific manufacturing method that analysis process in which through the application of codes with predetermined time standard that they are using the predetermined time standard accurately and consistently establish standard time for apparel and sewn product industry. So the they, they have the different codes are there they have the, the known as the GSD codes for each and every element for each and every activity the code has been defined and those code is basically used for the calculation of standard time. Then after the GSD code, next is the operations. GSD codes are used to analyze and improve working methods and offer speed, accuracy, consistency through the ethical application of recognized work measurement process. A one minute operation may take approximately 10 minutes to analyze it, which is more than 20 times faster than the conventional time study, what is, has been claimed by GSD company. So GSD, uh, GSD uh, offers the great ob uh, objectivity and this accuracy which has been in the, in the case of the operations. Then features are basically the features we talk about that operations are then grouped. These all operations will be is, has been grouped into features such as pocket, collar, cuff, that sleeve which as well as reducing the analysis time for new garments make it possible for non-technical staff to create a bill of labor and the labor costing from sketch or technical specification. As much fe features and operations are added to the growing database, analysis of new product becomes quicker and quicker as existing features are modified and reused. So once the, these, the, the features have been made, then it will be easier to do it later on also. And then it, after the features, the next is the style. Operations and features are brought together at style level to enable reports to be created for costing, line balancing, production allocation, pre-production planning and thread consumptions. These are reports that been further can be used for these, uh, these, these things. Then the GSD benefits, what are the GSD benefits are there after the GSD methodology, what are the benefits are there GSD, why a company will invest in the GSD, why they will go for the GSD, what are the benefits are there. All the GSD is a costly software. But due to its unique benefit, unique features, the still is is most popular in garment manufacturing. The benchmarking, the if you talk about the benefits of the GSD, the benchmarking efficiency. GSD creates a benchmark of efficiency and performance, and factory can set targets against the international standard, then evaluate their competitiveness and manage their business more effectively. That GSD is giving the benchmark benchmark for efficiency, benchmark for the production because the GSD data we are getting the SMB, that SMB is a standard minute value, that SMB is, is the standard time using that particular standard time which is internationally being followed, internationally is accepted. So in the GSD, we are using the GSD data, GSD uh, standard time data from GSD data we are getting the standard time and it can be used for understand the factory efficiency, where the factory is globally, where the factory is, what is the status of the factory, what is the percentage of the efficiency of the factory, what is the operator performance. These all data can be done, the benchmark can be used, this benchmark can be used. Then doing the product costing, if the person, uh, the we have to do the product costing, in the product costing GSD data is very very important because at the time of the costing, at uh, the time of the product costing, we can get that garment operation bulletin and that particular garment the, we can calculate the SMV using the GSD and that particular SMV we will understand the how much the work content is there and according to the work content we can set the cost sheet. We can, uh, we can do the costing and we can uh, add those costing in the cost sheet. So this is the feature of the costing, uh, costing feature is there for GSD. Then productivity basically we in the two days business business uh, world is very is competitive for everybody. Quick turnover and rapid changing styles, lower production quantity and smaller profit margins means manufacturer must reduce the cost and improve the productivity. Productivity is very very important to increase because if the company is not going to uh, 
increase the productivity company is out of the market and the the other other competitor will get the 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 the, the order so every company has to reduce the productivity ultimately they have to increase the productivity and they have to reduce the cost that is the mantra of a uh, of a company to sustain in this business world then uh, social compliance we talk about the gsd gsd facilitate the ethical application work measurements and is so doing assist with the goal of achieving acceptable level of social compliance in addition more effective planning more accurate operation times achievable production targets uh, productivity improvement help in maximize the wages and reduce overtime basically if the the targets has been set people are very much clear about that what is the target what is the work content which is basically allowing the operator to perform well and get the better wages and which is allowing the business person or the owners to get more uh, with the with the those increased productivity they are getting more profit so ultimately that profit share goes to the their manpower so it's a win win situation which is also provided by the gsd so gsd is a there's a general swing data as a software which is which is basically giving this edge of providing the standard time and which is internationally uh, ben- international benchmark and most so many garment manufacturers are using this particular gsd software what i has already explained about the number of the garment manufacturer who are using this gsd software which has been al- already claimed by gsd software team then uh, we discuss about the next is the how to find out the standard time what are the standard time in this particular if even gsd is following this standard minute value the standard time also known as standard minute value is the time required for a qualified operator working at standard performance to perform a given task the same in induce uh, uh, includes additional allowances for rest machine delay expected contingency bundle handling time these all things are there which is has been added in the smb smb is the universal measurement of time and its accuracy and consistency is essential for as the foundation to key business processes such as line balancing production planning incentive schemes and quantification of operator performance and factory efficiency then the definitely the productivity and social compliance are the factor for which can be done with the this one then we talk about the uh, traditional time uh, quantification where the time study is a traditional method what we discuss earlier that uh, the uh, of of development under very different business conditions what we see today in today's uh, business environment there is essentially four main areas where the process of time study does not meet the need of modern manufacture and as such create inaccurate and inconsistency time related data then we we talk about the time consuming a large static sample must be taken in each case in order to compensate for the variability of the human worker a one minute operation should be studied for 2 hours that is 40 hours of the time study for a 20 minutes product shorter study may be may may of the cost be made but only the cost of accuracy and in today's highly competitive conditions this trade off is unacceptable with the short production run and a rapid product restyling of today there is of not the time to properly and ethically apply time study so next we talk about the when time study fails what happened the fall back position is all to when the simply estimates production capability estimates usually based on historical information and are certainly quick but they are they also be dangerous inaccurate the more that style vary the more inaccurate the estimate becomes over a period of time estimate of the times are based on early estimates which are themselves based on historical informations which also may not been manufactured and accurate target so ultimately the invariably there is a drift away from the real smb because materials styles machines 
workplace and people change estimates which also includes everything with that went wrong in the past these are simply not accurate enough to become little more than guesswork over time the drift away from really reality naturally in increase and times become more and more inaccurate and inconsistent so uh, after this uh, understanding the time study and understanding about the gsd and understanding about the, the how the gsd and all time study fails we talk about the predetermined time standards a pts determine the established basic time to which is added ag uh, agreed allowance to rest for rest recovery contingency and delay thereby provide a standard time for any given process pts systems are used to construct standard time at a variety of levels macro operation features and product and form the foundation of industrial engineering practices and costing procedures unlike conventional measurement techniques pts do not rely on subjective performance rating they are proactive rather than reactive and they focus on method rather than time then next is the method time measurement that is known as mtm a predetermined motion time system pmts is frequently used to set labor rates in industry by quantifying the amount of time required to perform specific tasks the first such system is known as method time measurement is released in 1948 and today existing in three variations commonly known as mtm1 mtm2 and mtm3 mtm methods time measurement recognizes extremely short motions that occur in highly repetitive motions these motions do not take long in first place and if you will measure them you had better use a detailed system such as mtm most predetermined time systems use time measurement units instead of seconds or for measuring time and one tmu is defined as so if you talk about the one tmu so what if you talk about the one tmu this is defined as 0.036 this is the one tmu which is 0.06 seconds this is the value of one tmu so one tmu is defined as 0.03 seconds these similar smaller units allow for more accurate calculation without the use of decimals so uh, we have discussed today about the uh, industrial engineers about the role of the industrial engineer what industrial engineer does what are the you know what are the work study two different type the uh, we have the two parts of the work study is there one is method study another is the work measurement how we are doing the method study method study is to seek the best uh, best method to do the complete the job and work measurement to this is basically to take the to uh, to understand the how much time will take to complete that particular job so method study we have the different processes are there we have the different tools are there for method study we have the different uh, uh, we have to take different measures once we are doing the method study those things we have discussed then we have discussed about the work measurement in the work measurement how to do the major thing is the time study we have discussed about the time study what are the process of doing the time study we have discussed about the synthetic data we have discussed about the gsd we have discussed also about the operation bulletin what are the operation bulletin how it can be done what are the features of their operation bulletin what are the benefits of having the operation bulletin so we have completed today about the uh, about the industry engineering its modules and its related tools and techniques you are reached the end of this unit to summarize in this unit you have reviewed various industrial engineering concepts you have also learned about time study line balancing operation breakdown independent and dependent processes as well as importance of ergonomics at the workplace and techniques to design a suitable workplace layout thank you very much